Good morning, first graders. Hey, families. Today, I wanted to talk about tape diagrams in your packet that your scholar got this week. You guys might notice that some of the pages say to use a tape diagram to help show and help you solve a story problem. You, a lot of you are like me. You're like a tape diagram. I don't know what that is. I never used that when I was in school growing up. Well, I'm here to tell you what it is. A tape diagram is a math tool that helps us to understand what parts of the stories we have based on the story problem. So it can help us tell, it can tell us whether we have a part, it can tell us whether we have a total, whether we have two parts, and then that'll help us figure out how we can attack the problem. So, um, just looking at this tape diagram is really similar to a number bond. Looking at these three parts, where do you, what do you think should go, is represented in the top box, the part or the total? You got it. In the top box is the total. I know because the two smaller pieces are the parts, and when you add them together, it equals the, yeah, total. So that's why everything is the same length. Because the parts are the same size when you put them together as the total. So if this is the total, that means these pieces must be the, you got it again, parts. So if we have our two parts, the tape diagram helps us to figure out that if we have both of our parts in our story, we always add to figure out the total. We always add to figure out the, you got it. But what about if we have just one part and the total? Hmm. We have a part and a total, and we need to find that other missing part. What is a strategy that we can use to figure it out? Yeah, I heard two different answers. Some ones that we can count on, and some ones that we can subtract. Yes. If we know a part in the total, we can either count one or subtract to find the missing part. So we can either do the total minus the part equals the missing part, or part plus counting on to figure out this part until we get to the total. Sound good? All right, let's practice and do a problem together. I'm gonna get out one of my markers. So here's the problem. It says, Bentley has nine peanut butter treats and seven apple treats. How many treats does Bentley have in all? So first, I want to draw a tape diagram to figure out what parts of the story do we know and what do we need to figure out. To draw my tape diagram, I'm going to draw one big rectangle. I'm going to split it in half across and then split it in half again going down kind of like a T. Now let me reread the problem and see what I already know. Bentley has nine peanut butter treats and seven apple treats. So what's one thing that we know from me reading that problem? Yeah, he has nine peanut butter treats. Okay, now I need to think, hmm. Is, are those nine peanut butter treats? Is that a part? Or is that how many he has in total altogether? Yeah, I heard some people say it's a part. How do you know that nine is just a part and not the total? Yeah, because it says we need to figure out how many in all. And I know when it says in all, that means we need to figure out the total and nine is only one of the treats he had. He had two different types of treats. So if nine is my part, let me go ahead and label this part, part total, I'm gonna put nine right here. Because he has nine peanut butter treats. So then my apple treats, is that a part or is that a total? Yeah, that's the other part. He has seven apple treats. And since we don't know how many they have in the total, what do you think I can write in that top box? 
Yeah, a question mark. Because I need to remember that that's the part that we're looking for. We're trying to find the total. We're trying to find the... You got it. So now, the tape diagram doesn't help me to solve the problem. I'm still going to need to use a strategy to figure that out. Hmm. Let me see. What do you think is the fastest strategy I can use to solve this problem? I was thinking the same thing. I'm going to count on. But should I count on using starting from 9 or starting from 7? You guys are so smart. Yeah, I want to start with 9. Because 9 is my biggest number. And I know that if I start with my biggest number, then I have to count less to get to the total. So let me start with 9. 9. I'm going to count on and add 7 circles. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven. Now let me count on. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. What was my missing total? Yeah, 16. Am I done yet? No way. I still need my number sentence. So let's see. We knew that we had nine as my part. What do we do? Do we add or subtract? Yeah, we add it. Plus, how many do we add? Yeah, seven gave us, I'm gonna put a box because that was the missing part that we were looking for, 16. That looks a little weird. Let me fix that and make it a six. Perfect. Now, what are we missing? If you said an answer sentence, you're right. Let me reread the question so I make sure that my answer sentence matches and answers the question. How many treats does Bentley have in all? So I can say he... has 16 treats in all. Let's see. Do I have a tape diagram that shows me what we're missing? Yes. Do I have a strategy that I use to solve my problem? Yeah, I counted on. Do I have a number sentence with the box around the missing answer? Yes. And do I have an answer sentence that answers the question? Yes, I do. So these are all the things that you can use that you need when you're answering a story problem and it asks for you to use a tape diagram. So tape diagrams are very important because they help us understand what we know in a story and what we need to figure out. And they help us to know that if we have two parts, we always have to add. If we have a total in a part, you can choose. We can either subtract or we can count on. You got it. I can't wait to see how you guys are going to do with your tape diagrams this break. I'll be checking them as soon as we get back. See you soon, first grade. Love you guys.